out there in Philly? Uh, things are great. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know about the market on your side. Uh, we had a. Uh, we, we have a having. A, we are in, We are having a great March. A oh, great March. Okay. Good. We are one point one month supply in Philadelphia. So we are awesome. almost. Um, we continue to reduce our supply, unfortunately, but good for uh, the multiple offer situations. And uh, the condo market has been uh, not so great, but the housing mar house markets or houses has been phenomenal. Okay, awesome. And uh, yeah, I think like March, I know we've seen um, listings. We've done like in the first two weeks of March, we, our team got more listings in than the entire month of February. So just from our micro uh, version of what's going on there, it does feel like March is picking up. I talked to some other folks from around the country. They said their March was starting out strong as well. So Yeah, uh, and the market has been great. Uh, low interest rates, uh, people are uh, still understanding the value of low interest rates versus a price increase. Uh, it's a monthly payment that matters. It's the amount of interest you pay in 30 years. Um, and uh, people are taking advantage of it. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to keep admitting people, but let me let me ask you some questions since you won't brag on yourself. So I'll ask the questions that force you to do so. Um, so <laughs> um, where do you where do you currently rank, um, you know, within Keller Williams and the state of Philadelphia as far as uh, volume sales, et cetera? So I'm, I'm, I'm too. I'm two people below the Easy Network team. That's what I'm here. That's not what I was trying to get at. <laughs> you're, you're, so you're what? You're eighth in Keller Williams. So we're in the top ten, uh, given any any time of the year. Uh, we're in the top ten in Keller Williams in the country. Uh, okay. We are a very large team. We are about 54 people in the team. Uh, we have one expansion team in uh, New Jersey. We are based out of Philadelphia. Uh, we do close to about a thousand transactions a year. Uh, including rentals as well, uh, and uh, uh, our volume is about two. Was last year was two hundred six million. We always end up between two hundred and two twenty five a year in the last two years. So last year, uh, through pandemic, was uh, uh, obviously we were able to maintain our volume. Didn't really grow much, uh, but I think don't think that was the intent for anyone. We were just trying to sustain and uh, survive more than just thriving. Yeah, because you and and you guys were you're in Pennsylvania, and that was very restrictive. You were not considered essential, correct? We were not considered essential for almost close to what two months. Two uh, months. If you stepped out of your house and you showed a, a made a you did an open house or you made a, you did a showing, you could lose your license. So we had to uh, we had to be home and could not could not go out. Uh, so to properties. What I'm pointing out is that our team beat your team because you had both your hands tied behind your back. So thank you for the gracious uh, allowance of of that. Yeah. So as you guys can see, Gaurav and us, we we have this kind of fun uh, back and forth throughout the years, and um, really have just appreciated both. We just kind of mastermind and share knowledge together, and I'm so excited to have him here and his success. Um, there's 180,000 realtors in this company, and Gaurav's in the top 10, and. Uh, are you number one in the state of Pennsylvania as far as units or volume, or where where do you rank in the state of Pennsylvania? Uh, we were number three. Uh, there are a couple of other big players, uh, Mike McCann being one of them. We also see on stage from Berkshire Hathaway. Okay. Uh, so he is. So we are number two in the region uh, okay. of nine thousand agents. Uh, we used to be number one, and uh, Mike McCann got uh, number one for twenty twenty one till we uh, till we uh, take over the lead from him. Uh, he set new standards for us. And you know what? I'm going to, um, how did you do, how do you rank in condos in Philadelphia? Downtown Philadelphia condos, where do you rank as far as sales of those? So our, our condo sales in 2020 um, was about $110 million worth of volume. So we are number one in the condo market. We are the number one in the rental market. Uh, we own a rental division. So I'm going to start bragging a little bit so that we can get this yeah, conversation going. I don't want to make it more stale. So it's not about bragging, it's about you know, explaining what, what I do. So if I can answer any questions, that'll be beneficial. I'll make it more interesting instead of uh, dragging this conversation. So uh, we, we are uh, uh, about 50 people in the team, 54 to be exact. Uh, we are the number one rental company in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, I own a team called Rent Philly. We represent uh, 10,600 exclusive rentals in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, most of the high rises that you see are our exclusive listings. 
And the idea is how can we serve our clients to build the relationships to help them as a first time home buyer when they're looking to buy in the future. You know, you may have heard the statistics that almost 87% of the people in the industry will use the same agent they have used in the past. Only 13% actually capture that opportunity. So we are trying to do our best to be able to capture almost 90% of the clients that we have dealt with, helping them rent something in the city of Philadelphia. Um, uh, I own a luxury team called Black Label. Uh, Black Label is trademark in the country. And the idea was to not restrict ourselves in the condo market, but to grow in the luxury market. And uh, uh, our $1 million plus properties are being listed under the Black Label brand. I also own um, a property management company that I started about seven years ago. Uh, we manage single family and multifamily and high rise condominium associations. Uh, we manage about 3,500 units in and around the city of Philadelphia. Uh, and we are probably one of the largest single family privately held property management company uh, without a funding back, uh, backed by a corporation uh, in the city of Philadelphia. And then I own a market center, uh, Keller Williams, Philadelphia. We have about 500 agents and uh, we have a title company uh, that does really well. And I'm launching an insurance company in the next 30 days. So that's my day-to-day -day life. Um, so that I can tell you how crazy it is for me as well, like yourself. So how, what do you tell somebody, that, if you don't mind me, and I'll let you get into your class because I definitely want you to do that. But the one thing when I hear all of that is how do you have time for all of that? Like, what, what would you... Um, you know, I have people that say, gosh, I have three, you know, I have three listings and five buyers and, and, and I'm just so busy. And you just rattled off about six different companies you own. Um, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, what, what, tell me, tell me your secret there. Uh, people, uh, it's your team. So, you know, how Gary always says, either you have a lead problem or you have a leverage problem. So either there's not enough business in your life or if you, uh, so that you need to go prospect and lead generate. Uh, whatever business it might be, you got to get clients or you have a leverage problem so that, uh, you know, you, you're not able to uh, focus on your top 20% that generates 80% of your, of your wealth. So I think that's where my success uh, for time comes in. Uh, I have over a period of time really focused on I'm okay making less money, but I want to be able to grow much bigger. And uh, that's the only way to do that is uh, through leverage. Can I, can I make one request? And uh, I always do this in all, any of the classes, my own, my team, or other places. If, every, if anyone uh, is if in a position on. <laughs> to, 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 to share your video, uh, it's great to look at people and their faces and their smiles and the energy. Uh, as Kamber talking a black screen, um, I, I, you know, I respect your time and, and my time. Uh, I'm here to help you. Uh, if you can, uh, if, and if you are in a position to share your screen, I would really appreciate it. Thank you for saying that. And I think they're all laughing because I beat them over the head constantly about turning their cameras on. It's like looking through two-way glass. It's totally creepy and unfair when you're the only one talking and you don't see people. So no one's judging on how you look. We just want we just want to see uh, the, the energy of each. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard when you can't see see the other folks. Steve, yeah, if, no. you're, Steve if you're eating, it's perfectly fine. I'm going to have my water, my coffee, my lunch. Yeah. It's interesting. If you have kids around, dogs around, cats around, I'd rather see that than talking to a black screen. Uh, and, and, uh, and, th and thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, eating thank is not a problem. Steve is always eating. Who says that? Ryan Reynolds. Nice. <laughs> All right. Awesome. And we are recording this, so this is going to go out to three different uh, market centers as well. So I can't wait for you to hit it out of the park so that these folks can really get the um, opportunity to learn from you. So, uh, so Greg is a good, good friend. When he reached out to me, he asked, he allowed me to pick a topic of my choice, uh, which is usually not the case. Uh, so I, you, know, you have to struggle to find a topic that you can excel and not make a fool of yourself. Uh, I did, uh, you know, I, I brought a book with me that I, that I have read multiple times. And, and the reason why this also happens, you know, I've, I've been through, while I was rattling all these uh, companies, uh, they didn't come out of because of a want and an ego. They came out of a need. Uh, there was time when I uh, had to build this management company because we were working with a lot of more investors uh, and we wanted to find a way of helping them out and being in control to provide the customer service. So uh, we started the management company and then we continued. Uh, you know, helping build the organization uh, by, by more of a, a need than a want. So, you know, it came uh, throughout the process. I talked to my coach uh, many times. I tell him he's my therapist and I cry with him on the phone calls many times. Um, now, wait a minute. You just, you have a coach, but you're so successful and you own multiple businesses. You have a coach? 
What? That's that's more reason to have a coach. Don't you know everything? <laughs> uh, wish I knew. Uh, you do 225 million and you need a coach? I don't understand. Uh, I think everyone in life needs a coach. Uh, you, you can have it uh, in different places uh, with your wife, parents, friend, uh, a team leader, OP, uh, but I may not share all my details with them. Uh, I, would, I would probably share with them with someone that is not integrated with my team who has had the experience of working with uh, other, uh, you know, other professionals and people in my position. You know, I, I, the example would be, Greg, that if, if me and my wife are having a challenge in our relationship, I'll go to, to a marriage counselor that has done and handled that situation much more than I have. Uh, to be able to save the marriage, which is most important to me. Similarly, in my life, in my career, I'd rather deal with someone who can help me go to the next level and sustain and manage what I have. And I enjoy it. Thank uh, you. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I just, I, I, the one thing I keep saying is, I, I, maybe you know of somebody, do you know of anyone in Gary's top 100 that does not have a coach or multiple coaches? Uh, it, it's a good thing you mentioned multiple coaches because sometimes uh, I have people to talk about it and they say they have multiple coaches. There's a, there's a transformational coach and there's a motivational coach. Uh, uh, and then they may have a MAPS coach uh, who's just doing both or one of them. So yeah, okay. people have at least one or if not multiple. And folks, I, I, just, I just wanted to point out that success leaves clues and the most successful realtors in this company all have coaches. So that's a clue. But continue on. I didn't mean to distract. You just said that, and it was fantastic. Okay. But, uh, and uh, you know, when I should talk to him, I should tell him all the time as well that I don't know how to manage it. It's crazy. I'm going nuts. I can't. I, I'm losing focus. Uh, I, I I move in one direction, and the other one falls apart. I move to the third direction, and the, the last two fall apart. How do you, how do people manage it? And I always ask him, how does Gary do it? How does Gary have 180,000 agents, a billion? Uh, businesses that he manages and owns. But if you ask him, he knows me and Greg and yeah. Mike and everybody else's personal relationships uh, and their, our names from what uh, region are we from and what challenges we're having. Is like, how does he do it? Uh, and and uh, you know, most of the people uh, in the Gary's Keller's mastermind, you know, we have like a, more like a bromance with uh, the guy <laughs> sitting with a mustache. I, 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 I really admire him for what he has done. Uh, and uh, so I, I always think about what can I do to be in three places at the same time? Uh, and how do I manage that? And every single time he reminds me, it's leverage. You don't have the right people. And it's, it's a challenge, right? I have somebody in my team that has been with me for six years um, and they have come through the ranks and we, you know, we appreciated what they have done. And they came to the point of becoming the operations manager of the, of the team. Uh, and I'm still having challenges on certain aspects. And he questioned me, he said, is, is that person uh, and Greg, you know her, uh, you know, uh, she's in my team. And it's like, is, is she the right person in that role? And I said, yes, she is. And he says, is that you talking out of love and passion and respect uh, and loyalty? Or is, are you talking because of the, um, of what she needs to do to be in that role? Um, and I realized it was more for my love and passion and, and respect and loyalty. And they said, is that the right person who can be taught to be in that role? Or did you just put them in the role because they were with you for six years? The answer was that I just put them in the role because they were with me for six years. Uh, and now we got her a coach uh, about a year ago. And uh, oh my God, she has taken over the world and, I, and allowed me to buy a market center. So uh, that's leveraging again. Every business I have today, I have a business partner. I'm not the point of contact for any business as the sole producer. Uh, and I think that's the only way to do run a larger team. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I'll let you jump into your class. I just wanted to hit that. Cool. Uh, so, you know, uh, when, when he asked me to teach this class, one thing that I thought was it would be great uh, where most of the people in our, in our shoes, and I see the Reynolds team, you know, it's one of the, one of the biggest teams that, uh, you know, we, we are uh, uh, always following and, uh, you know, it's example set and the, and the Ben Kenny team or, uh, uh, you know, we have uh, Easy Networks team as well that we talk to them a lot. How do you guys do it? And if you are thinking in your business, how do I do it? Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about is mostly about this book. I'm going to point out a few key things that have made, it, made an impact in my life. I'll let you ask the questions as well. Um, and I won't read every single line item in the PowerPoint presentation. I've, done, I've done, taught this class a few times. Uh, it's very detailed. Uh, it's targeted towards newer agents as well as experienced uh, professionals. 
So if you allow me, I just want to go through it one by one. Uh, there's about uh, you know, quite a bit of chapters in this book, but I'm going to run and uh, talk fast like I usually do. A lot of my mind, try to keep up with my mouth, uh, trying to get everything out. But I'd, I'd like to have a conversation uh, in, 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 uh, towards the end of the part of the uh, class here. So hey, Gora, do you yeah. need uh, screen share capabilities? I think you already had it. So I just picked it Oh, up. you're good to go? All right, beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. So the Eat the Frog, 21 great ways to stop procrastinating uh, and get more done in less time. Uh, one disclosure uh, and disclaimer to everybody. English is my second language. I stumble on words all the time. I may say things that don't, I don't really mean it. I may correct myself. Uh, and I'm very uh, fearful of public speaking. So I usually put this out so that you can forgive me and uh, and and uh, if you laugh at me uh, because I said something wrong, it's because English is my second language. And then I don't uh, get more uh, cautious about my or about me saying something. That was a trick I learned a long time ago, Greg. That's what my coach taught me. He said, acknowledge and uh, beforehand knowing what you're going to expect in the future. Nice. All right, a simple truth. There's, not, there's never enough time to do everything that you have to do. Don't fall into the mental trap of assuming that people who are doing better than you are actually better than you. That's not correct. Um, I come from a computer science background. Uh, if I can do things in real estate in the last uh, 12 years, I think every anybody can. And I don't even know how to speak good English. Uh, and uh, nobody can pronounce my name either. So I can't be the Gaurav Gambhu team. We're the condo shop team. Uh, I, but I promise you, next time in my next life, I'm going to make my name Greg, Mike, John, Jim. <laughs> It'll be easier. So the key to success is action. If you think about it too long and don't dive into it, I think that's where the real challenge comes in. A lot of people come theoretical in their lives about the inventions they want to make. There are a lot more inventions that are made, but the ones that are successful are the ones that were implemented. Just because you have a great idea doesn't mean you're going to be rich. The ones that implement a mediocre idea could be rich. So if you don't buy a lottery ticket, you have a 0% chance guaranteed to win the lottery. If you buy a ticket, you at least have some percentage of winning a lottery. Always keep that in mind. If you don't do it, you would never succeed. There is no probability. The ability to concentrate single-mindedly on your most important task, to do it well and finish it completely, is the key to great success, achievement, respect, status, and happiness in life. You gotta put your heart and soul, uh, the key inside of, you know, is, is the heart and soul of this book is these three five points. Increase your overall levels of productivity, performance, and output to make you more valuable in whatever you do. I won't read every slide like this. I just wanna start the basis for this one and I'm gonna uh, touch key points uh, in, the, in the presentation. If I go too fast, Greg, can you like, interrupt me? I, I, I have sure. a tendency of talking very fast. No, you're good. Good cadence. All right. The, uh, what what is, has, has, has anyone read this book, Eat That Frog? Okay. Okay. Some, pe some people have. Uh, and, and the ones that have not, you know, what, what, what does Eat That Frog mean? It's basically uh, your, your frog is your biggest, most important task. The one that you know you need to do, but you just can't get yourself up doing it. And so most likely to procrastinate on these biggest tasks. And, and in our business, it's prospecting, lead generation. That's one thing that we will always we know from deep down in our heart. That's what we need to do. Uh, but we find reasons not to do it because it's just not fun. And um, it's, it's, uh, it takes a lot more effort sometimes. There's rejection involved in it. Uh, it it's, it's not something that we prefer. So that's, in my mind, our biggest frog in our business. So first rule, if you have to eat two frogs, that means two biggest items that you are most importantly you have to finish, eat the ugliest one first. How do you find the ugliest frog of the two tasks that you have to eat or the to do? Is the one that will make you most impact or money or growth or leverage in your life. So eat, find the one that's going to give you the best results and do that first. Not necessarily if you have a to-do list item of nine or 10 things. Sometimes doing one thing on your task will give you better results than doing all the nine or 10. Just checking off that list is not necessarily the most important part of your day. Doing the most important task is the most important part of your day. So take action immediately. Develop the habits of success. Develop a positive addiction. Have you ever felt if um, you're on a diet and uh, you, know, you, you, you give yourself 
uh, 30 day challenge. You know, you see these, these days, there's a 66 day challenge and a 75 day challenge that is going out there. Uh, if you start the first, second, third day, then you like to keep that momentum. Because now if you're winning, you want to continue to win. I would hate, not because we are the top 10, I would hate to be the top 50. It's, it's just not an ego. I like to win. And, and I think we all do. But what happens is if you have not won to the point, you don't taste what it feels like. And then we just let it go. But once you have, once you get there, then you work harder because you enjoy the addiction of having that success or the growth or being able to create opportunities for you, your family, and your team members. There's a different excitement to it. So, so the idea is how do I win? Doesn't have to be large tasks. If I take, if I win small tasks in my life, I can still enjoy the same addiction. So set your goals, which are not necessarily taking over the world and being number one. Set your goals. I need to double my business. Set your goals. I need to increase my production by 20%. Set your goals. I'm going to talk to five clients more than I talked to yesterday. Once you start winning those small wins, you start enjoying the work. It's all about having fun, what you're doing, not necessarily the, the, uh, the number of hours you're putting in or uh, how many transactions did I close. You have to have fun. So have the positive addiction. I think it was a key component of this uh, you know, some of the things that I was reading uh, in this book, no shortcuts, absolutely no shortcuts. Uh, the three Ds of new habit formation, make the decision, form a discipline and be determined to be able to work on those things. Visualize, visualize yourself as you want to be. Someone who gets important jobs done quickly and well on a consistent basis. Think about, um, Think about, you know, uh, I, I don't, if you're not a parent, I apologize for using this example, but think about, you know, being a parent and the kids coming to you. The reason why the kid comes and, and I have a seven year old daughter, so I'm relying, uh, uh, and I've been a kid myself and I still go to my parents for some things. There's a level of comfort and confidence and trust built in. I can go to them or my daughter can come to me. She knows somehow I will always have the answer. I may not have the answer, but she believes I have the answer. So if I am going to put myself in a situation where my clients think they can come to me for any answers in real estate on a consistent basis, you will watch your business grow. If you watch people in your team who can come to you and expect a solution every single time they have a problem, you're the solution finder. That's when you'll find that your team members are going to come to you consistently and gain respect. Greg being the team leader, if you go to him all the time and you you know, uh, think about uh, the team leader, you get bombarded with questions all day. And the expectation is, I'm gonna give you a problem, you have 30 seconds, find me a solution. <laughs> I'll throw carbon dioxide at you, convert it to oxygen, give it back to me. And the, and, and, and the person who does that well consistently will be successful in their role or as a leader. So we have to know our business well. So visualize yourself as you want to be. Any questions so far on what we are discussing or talking about? I, I like the one thing, I had an aha, I wrote it down is become addicted to growth. Like you can't actually be addicted to the, 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 the growth process of learning and growing. Um, and, and when you're not growing, you may find yourself unhappy. And um, I just, I love that, that that was powerful. It's, you're not just addicted to habits, but actually the, the concept of growth is something you can become addicted to. Absolutely. There are 20 chapters. We won't go into all of them, but I want to pick the points uh, that are, I feel are important to discuss. So the, the first one, the purpose of the, uh, is to set a table, the knowledge of what one wants and a burning desire to achieve it. So that, let's just talk about it again. The knowledge of what one wants and a burning desire not just a desire, a burning desire to achieve it. That's your big why, right? Why do you want to do it? And I, I always remind my team and anybody that else around me is to remind, to remind you, uh, and I go on the emotional family side a lot because I think, uh, you know, even our company culture uh, and our vision and our mission is based on, you know, it's a, it's a God, family, and then business. But, uh, you know, all, in our personal life, doesn't matter business, we always are, Somewhere, somewhere deep down inside your family is always going to be part of your big one. I always think to myself, when I'm going to work away from my wife, my daughter, 
am I going to make them proud by coming to work and not focusing on what I need to focus on most? Would it be fair to them to tell my daughter that I'm going to work and when I come back home, I didn't achieve what I was supposed to at the best possible results that I could have achieved? Am I not cheating them? Would my parents be very proud because they gave birth to me and they said, you're going to make Gaurav an amazing C plus citizen. <laughs> no, they want the best from me and I want the best from my kid and I want my daughter to be the most proud of me. So what is my big why? So you have to have a burning desire inside it to achieve your goals and you have to dig deeper on your big why. So decide exactly what you want. Write it down, set a deadline, make sub deadlines. This is my annual, quarterly, monthly, weekly, 411. It's such an easy concept. You break it down. You make a list of everything that you need to achieve your goal. You organize your list, you take action, and you resolve to do something every single day that moves you towards your major goal. One of the very worst uses of time is to do something very well that need not be done at all. You don't have to do the admin tasks. You don't have to worry about going, picking up keys and posting a sign and standing there with the home inspector. That's when you use leverage. If you're not using the leverage, then you're focusing on the wrong items. Plan every day in advance. How do you eat your biggest, ugliest frog? Break it down into specific step-by-step -step activities. I love this one. Increase your return on energy. The 6P formula. Prior, proper prior planning prevents poor performance. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. How do you get two extra hours a day? You make a plan and you write it down and you work off that plan. Your different lists for different purposes. Create a 411 for different tasks. The first 10% of time that you spend planning and organizing before your work begins will save you as much as 90% of the time in getting the job done once you get started. I think it's a very uh, amazing statement. You know, if you spend 10% of your time thinking about the task, then you save 90%. Have you ever seen those people who solve the um, Rubik's Cube in like a minute? They spend 30 seconds looking at it. And then you can blindfold them and they'll still solve. Because they're thinking of what they need to do. They're planning it. They're creating a formula in their mind. They understand the problem. And then solving is the easiest part. It's just that the first 15 or 20 seconds that they have to look at. It. Apply the 80-20 rule to everything. 20% of your activities will account for 80% of your results. Your number of tasks versus importance of tasks. Just because there are more items in the list doesn't mean you have to finish nine of them. Finish on the most important one. Motivate yourself. Effective, productive people force themselves to eat that frog, whatever it is. We are all entrepreneurs. We decided to be in business for ourselves. We are the leaders. We don't have to wait for someone else to come and say, get up and get the job done. Or remind us getting the, eating that ugly frog first. We have to motivate ourselves. We have to get out of our rhythm of not being able to do certain things. Time management is really life management, personal management. You're always free to choose the task that you'll do next. After this call and a meeting, we all have a choice. But your ability to choose between the important and the unimportant is a key determinant of your success in life and work. What you do next, how you pick, it's a six second rule. You have six seconds to decide what you're gonna pick the next task. And if you're not in a great mindset, you'll pick the one that is easiest because you don't feel like working or I don't feel like doing something. But if you push yourself to do it, if you only push yourself every day to make a decision at, for six seconds when you're waking up in the morning and say, I'm gonna wake up at this time, I'm not gonna snooze it, or I'm gonna wake up in the morning and do my exercise, that will dictate a year later how your health looks. Resist the temptation to clear up small things first. Consider the consequences. What will happen if I didn't do what I'm supposed to do? Focus on these above all else. Long-term thinking improves short-term decision-making. I need to focus on the bigger game. It doesn't matter what I'm doing now. 
If I only eat healthy one day at a time, I will focus on this six months later. Obey the law of forced efficiency. There's never enough time to do everything. You, you will be fooling yourself if you thought I'll actually catch up with my to-do list one day. Nobody can. But there's always enough time to do the most important thing. That's where leverage comes in. There will never be enough time to do, I'm repeating so much, sorry myself. Deadlines are an excuse. Working better under pressure is seldom true. Under the pressure of deadlines, often self-created through procrastination, people suffer great stress, make more mistakes, and have to redo more tasks than under any other conditions. I was guilty of this last week on a, on a task. We are relaunching our productivity coaching program and um, in the market center, uh, and our team asked me to review an agreement for our PC coaches. Uh, and, and for some reason, I read it once, and I thought there was a lot of changes that needed to be done. And I kept delaying it and delaying it and delaying it. And I got myself, every Monday I told them Thursday, every Thursday I told them weekend. And then the next week I told them I had a personal family issue uh, or, or, or a commitment. And then I got myself for another few days. And then last Friday, today's Tuesday, right? So last Friday we had an executive uh, meeting uh, and I said, um, you know, this weekend I'll do it for sure. And our agent service director said, yeah, yeah, I've heard that for two weekends in a row. And I said, you know what? You're absolutely right. And uh, let me tell you why I'm not doing it. It's I just don't want to do it. And I said, do you think somebody else can do this for us? I said, no, probably not. I really want to re review it. And I said, if you're the bottleneck for the company, either get out of the way, give it to somebody else or do it. And I said to myself, on Monday, when I come to work, if it's not in everybody's inbox, feel free to bring an egg and throw it in my face. And I said, will you give this in writing? I said, yes. I sent an email to everybody. I said, throw an egg on my face if I am not giving this to you by Sunday night. Guess what I did? I did the reading over the weekend and I finished my task. I had to self-motivate myself. I had to set my own deadlines for what I was procrastinating against. Whatever works for you. Put yourself in the place where I say, I am the reason why others are deadline. Uh, others, uh, my, I'm the reason why others are looking at me as a bottleneck. You know, another way I think about life is um, the work that I do on a daily basis and the tasks that I complete will define the amount of success and money I will make, will define if I take my daughter and live in a holiday inn or Disney hotel when I take her to Disney World. So do I want to be able to take my daughter to Disney World in a Disney hotel? And if I create the right opportunities, I'll have everybody in my company take their kids to Disney World in a Disney hotel. So do I think everybody in my team deserves to take their kids to Disney World in a Disney hotel? I decide to be the owner of the company. I decided to be the team leader. So I have the responsibility of making sure that my team takes their kids to Disney World and Disney Hotel. How can I take that lightly? I can't. And if you decide to help your clients to invest the biggest investment of their lives or to sell the biggest investment of their lives, you are prohibiting them to maximize their best that they can achieve by not letting them take their kids to Disney World in a Disney hotel. You don't have to do that. You decided to raise your hand and say, I would like the opportunity of selling or helping you buy the house. Nobody asked to be in this business, but if you said, yes, I will, be the best that world can ever make you in that position. Otherwise, you're not fair being to the other people. Decide to procrastinate on low value activities. It's the worst thing you can do. Say no to anything that is not a high value use of your time and your life. Think on paper. If you're creating tasks, divide them. What, do I, what is the most important? Something that you must do. A task that you should do, but only has mild consequences at B level. Something that you would be nice to do for which you, there are no consequences, whether you do it or not, is C. Something that you can delegate is D. And something you can eliminate altogether and won't make any real difference in your life is E. Greg, I don't mind forwarding this to you as a PDF and if you, in, later on in case you want to, if I'm going so fast, I don't want to, um, uh, do that. So I'll send this list to you. So everybody doesn't have, don't have to take notes. I'll just forward this to you. Focus on key result areas. Your job is broken down into key result areas. The key results of management and areas of sales. There are things that you decide for yourself. Are you going to be in the managerial role? Or are you going to be in the production sales role? 
So if you're planning, organizing, staffing, delegating, supervising, measuring, or reporting, you are focusing on the areas of management. But if you are actually in the sales, focus on prospecting, identifying the needs of your buyers and sellers, answering objections, closing the sale, script practicing, lead generation, uh, building a database, getting resales and referrals. That's your focus. As agents, we try to do both at the same time. And then it's easier to do the, I'm planning for my business while I'm also trying to do sales. You got to pick your areas and focus on it. That'll make you the most money. Think apply. Okay. apply the law of three. Identify the three things you do in your work that account for 90% of your contribution. One thing all day long. One task that will contribute the greatest value to your company. So think about it, right? So take, your, take your calendar for the whole last one week. Look at every single item that you're targeting on or you're focusing on. And look at them and say, if I had only time to do one thing, which one of these will make me the most success or most money to myself or to the company? Take immediate action. Delegate where you can and concentrate on the three things you do best. Biggest mistake agents make, and I don't know what level of production each agent on this call is for, uh, or who'll be watching it, um, transaction management. Cost 395 to 495, depending on who you're using, third party or in-house. And we spend a lot of time in transactions that cause us headaches by making sure that we are handling the transaction in the name of, I like to be in control or my client expects it. Trust me, clients don't expect anything from you besides trying to get the maximum price for the house if you're a listing agent. Sell it fast, sell it for the most amount of price. The reason why most agents get stuck and they feel that the client is calling them all the time is not because they want us, is because we are the bottleneck for that information. If I can tell them to contact someone else for the information, they need the info, not me. My job is done. They want me when they need me. Unfortunately, I became the bottleneck. That's where leverage comes in. Delegating is not easy. You gotta get used to it. The quick list method. In 30 seconds, write down your three most important goals in life right now. If you can't think of three in 30 seconds, then you gotta take 30 minutes of your life and think about it. That means you're not ready to write your most important task in your life. Time management is a means to an end. Getting more done in less time is to enable you to spend more face time with the people you care about. I'd rather sit home and watch TV with my daughter. She loves Disney World. I, I, I give a lot of Disney examples. So uh, <laughs> my daughter loves Disney. And we took her to Disney World a year and a half ago and had the greatest time. I, I lived Disney through her eyes. Loved it. Loved it. Uh, it is the quality of time at work that counts and the quantity of time at home that matters. Prepare thoroughly before you begin. We talked about this before. Do the first thing, whatever it is, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Take it one oil barrel at a time. Have you, have, has anybody heard uh, about this story? Uh, in, a, in, a, in a desert, um, uh, the, in Sahara Desert, somebody said, I'm gonna cross the Sahara Desert. And they said, you know, you can easily, easily, be get, you can easily get lost. Uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the middle of a desert, or I don't know which direction I have to go, or I don't know how far I have to go because it gets, it gets real difficult crossing Sahara. I've never crossed it. I read the story. What they, what, they did, what they did a story on was at a certain amount of space or distance, they kept one oil barrel. So you could see the oil barrel from where you're standing the next oil barrel. And that was the place where you get the next oil barrel. Your task was, I have to go to the next oil barrel. And then you see the next oil barrel. Your task was to go to the next oil barrel. So that's how the story came about is you can cross the Sahara Desert by one oil barrel at a time. Absolute interesting story and a factual story in our lives as well. You create short steps, small tasks, finish them. You get motivated doing small things at a time. Take one step, you'll finish a milestone. You can overcome procrastination and accomplish extraordinary things by taking just the first step, getting started towards your goal and then taking it one step at a time. 
A major reason for procrastination is a feeling of inadequacy, a lack of confidence, or an inability in the key area of a task. Be true to yourself when it doesn't have to be in front of anybody else and think about this. Why do people don't make calls? Why don't people prospect? Why don't people do lead generation? Is it really boring? Or we are afraid of rejections? Many people hate making calls because they are afraid of being rejected. Feeling weak is enough to discourage you from starting the job at all. If you start, if you made a, made a new resolution of losing weight and you lost it once and you lost it twice, the third time you probably are not going to do it again. It's because I always start and I always fail. The problem with weight loss programs is people think I'm gonna lose 20 pounds. That's the biggest mistake they make. It's a very long goal that is hard to measure and they want to lose it in two months or three months. If people said I will lose one pound a month, one pound in two weeks, or even better, I will make sure I won't eat more than 1500 calories a day. I will cut sugar out of my body and I will work out every single day and I'll measure myself once a week. Monitoring those simple goals are much more important than monitoring it by losing weight of 20 pounds. And when they give up, it's a sense of failure. And people hate that. Determine exactly what you're good at and throw your whole heart into doing those specific things very, very well. If you're good in management, focus there. If you're good in sales, do that. If you're good in postcard and, and door knocking, do that. The three steps to mastery. Read in your field for at least one hour every day. Take every course and seminar available on the key skills that can help you. Listen to audio programs in your car as you drive from place to place. You'll have to find more time in a day. There are people who do more in a month than some people do in a lifetime. Same number of hours. Identify your key constraints. Set the speed at which you achieve your most important goals and focus on alleviating the single choke point. Why aren't you at your goal already? So think about this, why aren't you at your goal already? People say, I've been doing this for 25 years. I love that statement. You've been doing it for 25 years and your business hasn't changed. Is it a proud statement or is it a sad statement? You have, and some people say, well, I'm happy doing this for 25 years because my goal was to do exactly what I'm doing. That's perfect. But if the goal is to continue improvising and increasing and forming a team or forming a better life balance or making more money to be able to offer the people then what are we doing wrong? Whatever you did got you the results in the last 12 months. If you want different results, change those habits of what didn't work last year. Just doing the same thing again and again is not gonna make a different result. Gaurav, I like this one a lot because I, I feel like um, even my job as a team leader is to help people identify what their ceiling is. You're saying key constraints, but admit that you have a problem, admit that you've hit a ceiling. And, and so literally, I think top producers are constantly looking for that constraint or that choke point that's on its way or that ceiling. Um, and, and the minute they feel that their, their growth has like hit a pause of any kind, whether it's in leverage, whether it's in sales, units, volume, whatever it is, that that's, they're looking for the opportunity to understand that they have a challenge to fix, right? It's, and, and I think a lot of people just say, well, this is what it is. I'm, I'm at this point. And they haven't identified their key constraints like chapter 12 is talking about. So I like that one a lot. And, and in our business as well, you know, I, I, when I said jokingly that we're going we're gonna to beat Mike McCann, uh, the easiest way to get number one is to look at what number one does, do exactly what they do, and do one thing better than them. In my mind, that's a real key to being number one. I have yep. no shame of copying what he does, what he does well. If his marketing is great, if his uh, follow-ups are great, if his uh, brand is great, I, I need to build the same. Seems like that's what it takes to be number one. I could do one thing better than him. And I love Mike McCain, so you know, I, I, I have the highest regard for the guy. So I, you know, good friends with him. That's why I can take his name every single time. <laughs> it's because it's a friendly competition and he motivates me and my team. So look into yourself. What is it in me that is holding me back? What sets the speed at which I get the results I want? Strive for accuracy. Put the pressure on yourself. 
Imagine that you have to leave town for a month and work as if you had to get your major task completed before you left. How many times we make sure that when, before we get to the airport, before the flight takes off, we get to done, we get to do more things in that one hour of standing at the airport than we do in the whole day. Because we know we have to get it done. Yeah. Work your life with the same in a state of emergency, right? Greg, uh, doesn't, uh, didn't uh, Gary talk about it? Uh, run your business like you're an ER. Yeah. Absolutely. Every not. day, is, uh, run your business that way. Every realtor talks this, this commonality where they say they go on vacation and that's when they close their most deals. That's because you did all the work before you went on vacation that you should have been doing on a weekly basis. So if you act like you're going on vacation next week, you're probably going to have more success next week. That's true. Here, here's the two interesting uh, statements. And I think every leader is guilty of uh, this thing as well. The world is full of people who are waiting for someone to come along and motivate them to be the kind of people they wish they could be. I love that statement. The world is full of people who are waiting for someone to come along and motivate them to be the kind of people they wish they could be. Only about 2% of people can work entirely without supervision. That's why I need a coach. That's why I need an accountability partner because I'm not going to try to beat the statistics that I'm the top 2%. I'm not, I'm right. not. I know my, my, my inefficiency, I'm not. Uh, and I'm not gonna try to fool myself because I plan to be the top 2% of success and I need help. Lead the field. The standards you set for your own behavior should be higher than anyone else could set for you. Successful people continually put the pressure on themselves to perform at high levels. Be your own cheerleader. Look for the good in every situation, focus on the solution, and always be optimistic and constructive. Develop a positive mental attitude. I'm gonna be trying to keep up so I can talk for five minutes as well. So learn to turn the devices off and leave them off. Technology is a terrible master. I'm guilty as much as probably anyone else. I'm still trying my best. I work off two phones and um, I, I, I'm still trying to do a better balance at home. Uh, so when I go home, I need to spend more time. It's a quality of time, right? Uh, that I want to spend at home as well. So I'm working on that myself. Uh, don't become addicted to technology. Refuse to be a slave. Uh, and, and someone will tell you if it's important enough, someone will tell you. So if it's really, really important, and I, and I always told my wife, uh, the reason I always keep my phone handy in case somebody else needs me. So like if somebody really, really needs you that you love and, and, and your parents or your cousins or your friends that really, really need you, they have my cell phone number. If they can't get a hold of you, they'll call me. I think, you know what, you're so right. Why, why, why am I uh, trying to achieve uh, something in the, name of, uh, in the name of being available and I'm trying to not be a fair to the family? Use your technological tools to confront yourself with what is most important and protect yourself from what is least important. Take control of your communication. Uh, you can read through this. I, 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 this is not really something that uh, it talks gets into technology. I think I think we all understand uh, the multitasking illusion is something interesting. People can only focus on one thing at a time. Going back and forth is called task shifting. It takes about seven minutes to shift your focus back to your task and continue working. Uh, I have an executive assistant talk about leveraging. I got that one about a year and a half ago. Uh, my life changed again. I think I got an extra three hours a day in my life. Uh, and she always tells me, she's like, you always teach about, you know, multitasking or task shifting and you lose seven minutes. You bother me all the time. What about my time? And <laughs> that, that, that's a different conversation I'm having with her. Uh, double your productivity. Plan each day in advance. Work nonstop for 90 minutes. Take a 15 minutes break. Then work on the 90 minutes. Um, easier said than done. But planning is going to make, make a, a huge difference as well. Break large, complex tasks down into bite-sized pieces. Uh, in, I come from India. In India, they say, how do you eat um, an elephant? Uh, and, and the answer is, uh, you know, one piece at a time or one spoon at a time. Uh, and not that we eat elephants, uh, where it's, uh, I've never eaten an elephant, but that, that's the idea, a big, big giant task. Uh, the salami slice method, layer the task in detail, writing every step in order, and then resolve to do just one slice of the job of the time being. So, you so, and then the next method is a, a Swiss cheese method. Punch a hole in the task, like a hole in the block of sweet, Swiss cheese and then start working outwards. You know, you, you focus on most important and then you start doing the other ones uh, after that. 
create large chunks of time. Uh, this is something that my uh, executive assistant taught me. Uh, every day I have a two, I never had time. I always to tell, I don't have time. I'm in meetings, Zoom calls, calls me all the time. Uh, every day I have two hour hold, do not schedule. The first thing she did when, I, when, when she came um, in my life was she put two hour holds every single day. I am not allowed to schedule during those hours. And have you heard the other statement? If you, um, if you, uh, if you erase it, you got to replace it. So if I do take half an hour from there, I have to take it away from some other place. So I have to have two hours of thinking time every day. That is the last one. Develop a sense of urgency. This is what we were talking about before. Make a habit of moving fast on your key tasks. Become known as a person who does things quickly and well. Build a sense of momentum uh, and do it now. Uh, I don't know if people know Alan Dom. Uh, he's the number one real estate agent in the country. Uh, he's also mentioned in the MREA book. He is out of Philadelphia. We get to um, talk to him every once in a while. Uh, and on his computer, uh, he has a screensaver called uh, Do It Now. And he always reminds us. He says his, his philosophy is uh, the same what Gary talks about, run your business as a, like an ER. Do it now. Everything is important. And single handle uh, every task. Uh, going back, said prior, prior to me, okay. uh, so single handle every task. I, I was going blank for a second. Set clear priorities, start immediately and work without stopping until the job is 100% complete. And I think that's what I did uh, for the example I gave you about my PC uh, contract. I sat down and I got it done in an hour and a half. I procrastinated for three weeks, unfortunately. So I put that into your same perspective in life. What do I need to do on my side to achieve the most important task that'll get me the most best results in my career and my life um, and just sit and just finish it. And we all can do it. Um, so when you focus on your most valuable task and concentrate until it is 100% complete, you actually shape and mold your character and become a superior person. So go and eat that frog. Conclusion, it comes under three C's, your confidence, your consistency, and your commitment. Here's a chance for me to be the best I can be. Am I going to own it? or blow it. Love that. And one thing I can say about Gaurav is his consistency. He's consistently at the top. He's consistently um, coming up with new, strong, visionary ideas. He's consistently implementing those ideas. He's always learning based, learning from other agents. I watch him not just with us. That's how we met is through a mastermind where we just, you know, started communicating with one another about what we're doing that that is helping us achieve such you know great success in our marketplaces so he's consistently learning based and and has a sense of urgency about him that i wish he'd give up a little bit so he'd stop jump us in the ranking so um i i don't know if i can call in a favor to the governor again and see if they can knock you out for two months this year but i'm kind of you know no I, I wouldn't wish that on anyone so i know you would i know you can so, but Sorry if I went too fast, a lot of information in there. Um, and, and when I picked the topic and I went back to review my notes, like, oh my God, you know, this is not a 45 minute call or a meeting, but, uh, uh, but okay. I jumped through it. I, I love, I love the, I love the, um, the topic because I think it's a little bit different. I love the, I love that it's coming from you. Um, you know, I love that. How many times did you read this book? I think I read three times so far. Three times, and you just and 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 you're applying it. I mean, it's kind of something that you're applying to. Your success is a big part of this, I imagine. A hundred percent. I think before I read this book, many times I did not. I was a firm believer of multitasking, uh, which I know doesn't exist anymore uh, after getting convinced from this book and also Gary repeating it. Uh, and some of the concepts of uh, running a business like an ER, you know, if you read certain things and they don't stick with you at times, then somebody else says it at the same time in a podcast or somebody that you hear from someone else, you know, or when Gary says it, it's like, you know what, I read it someplace else and now Gary is saying it or I read it from somewhere else and another friend of mine is saying it. Maybe there's more truth to that and I'm the dummy who's believing in my own silly concepts, get out of my own way and learn from that. So it's good to have uh, that concept built in and, and be, be willing to change. Well, we've got some really, really good agents on, on this call right now. Any questions um, that you guys have? Uh, we'll just kind of leave it open because I think it's important that you guys, you know, have the opportunity to ask any questions that you have. Yes, Teresa Kenning. Hey, that was really good. Thank you very much. Curious about what other books you would recommend and what podcasts you listen to. So I am reading uh, a Gary John Bishop book these days. Um, 
<laughs> and that 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 really was recommended to me by someone. Um, I think I think my brain works at a thousand RPM, and I'm trying to calm down a little bit more. Uh, I, I'm trying to, and it's, you know, if if you ask me, Gaurav, how much money you made last year, uh, it's a shame. Uh, but I don't know. I have to wait for my accountant to tell me. But I know my basic necessities are met. I know my team is doing this much volume. Uh, I know what percentage business profit will be made. Like I know those numbers, but I'm not working for money. I'm working for the opportunities and uh, and I and I have analyzed this. I'm really working to the best I can be. I'm trying to optimize myself in the best position I can make myself in. If I put myself to be an owner of a, of a market center or a lead team leader or a management company, I want to be the best. So that's what I'm stri- thriving on or, or working for, for. So one of my friends recommended this book to me and said, you know, you can mess up with your own mind at times if you don't really understand yourself or understand your long-term goals. So that's the book I'm reading. It's interesting. Um, and uh, the other one that I just uh, read before, uh, uh, you know, I, I keep going back to John Maxwell's book. Uh, I love Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins a lot. Uh, you know, he, uh, when, I'm, when I'm doing exercise in the morning or bicycling, I love listening to him. He pumps you up, like, you know, pushes and enforces. His story is great. I have never taken his, uh, his classes, but I listen to his podcast. Uh, the author is uh, Gary John Bishop. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an interesting, interesting book. It's an easy read. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Well, I got another question if no one else does. What does your morning look like? Like what, give us, give us the first 30 minutes. Uh, five o'clock. And until about uh, a year ago, I was a 3 a.m. sleeper and 7, 8 a.m. morning riser. Uh, hated, hated it, hated it. Uh, I used to take pride in saying I have uh, two shifts. I go home, spend time with the family, they go to bed, then I have a 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. shift. Took real pride in it, actually. I used to talk in, uh, in meetings and saying how, how I'm able to achieve what I'm doing because I work harder than anybody else. Uh, and then my coach uh, reminded me and said, uh, you know, if you say that to me, I'll think you're the dumbest person on the planet. And he says, you know, so you don't take pride in saying that. Let me explain to you why. And then he started going into the health part of it and said, you know, your brain cells need to be sleeping. And I said, nah, my body's amazing. I can sleep at four hours a night and blah, blah. It's okay. Try this something. Try something new. Uh, so uh, he uh, changed my habits and said, uh, let's take a challenge. So now after a year, I wake up at five o'clock every morning, uh, five to five thirty is, uh, I drink my cup of coffee, uh, and I think about the day and I reflect on what's going on. It's my personal me time, uh, five 45 to six 30 is gym time every day. Uh, six 30 to seven 15, I get ready. Seven 15, I leave home to drop off my daughter to school. Uh, I'm at, in the office by eight 30, uh, 10 o'clock is my first meeting. So an hour and a half in the morning for myself and catching up, uh, 10 to five. 5.30 is usually crazy. Uh, I have very strict uh, lunchtime. I eat lunch at 12. Then at 3, I have to, because I skip breakfast, uh, I'm on the 16-hour intermittent fasting period. Mm-hmm. So I eat at 12, I eat at 3, and then I go home and I eat at 7. And then I'm in family time and in bed by 9, 30, 10. So uh, in between, before I go to bed, I'll spend 30 minutes reading something and catching up. So that's and- my boring everyday life. Are you feeling better? Do you notice a difference? Oh my God, I lost 22 pounds in the last uh, 18 months or six to 15 months. Uh, and uh, I, I lost 30 pounds in the last two years. So uh, it was, it's getting better. And, and I love it, full of energy in the daytime. And I bet your family likes it a lot better too. And my family likes me much better as well. And, uh, and my team likes me better because I, because I was more grumpy in the morning because I didn't have enough sleep. Yeah. Uh, it, does ref- it does affect it. I, I, I just used to hide behind saying that's who I am as compared to, and, and I was in a position where they couldn't really push me out. I was the owner of the company. I am the owner of the company. So they had to deal with my tantrums, but I think I'm a better leader. I'm a better friend. I'm more calm and better husband and a better father like this. And setting a better example for all of them. And, and, and I'm saying, so I, I was trying to set a wrong example before by asking them to work till 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. Till somebody from outside came and reminded me the benefits of it. Good for so, you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay. I appreciate it. A lot of chat. I, I didn't get a chance to read any of them. Uh, thanks, Gaurav. Uh, uh, books to recommend. Hoping that 
can I share something with you? I just did this for my team and I thought this was, um, this was really interesting. And I, and I, people, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, what do you do in this uh, one month supply when you have multiple bidding offers and how do you convince the buyers to, um, you know, focus on putting more than asking price? Can I share something with you? Yes. <laughs> Anything. So I have, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still active. Uh, I'm a numbers geek. I have a computer science degree. So that's where my, my mind works. So here's, here's something I just made for the team uh, while I was teaching a class. And I said, you know, let me just do the math in my mind and figure out what ha- what's going on and what I can help with. So I'll start with this one. And I'll take us three minutes to explain this to you. So let's say today's price is a $600,000 home. And it's a 2.75%. Your payment is $2,449. And your 30-year interest is going to be $280,000. So somebody will say, the market is crazy. I'm not going to spend the money now. I'm going to wait till the market comes down because this is nuts. I don't want to be bidding on this house at full price. So I say, okay, so what, what would you like to do? I said, I'm going to wait till the prices come down. So, okay, so let's wait till the price comes down by 5%. Going back in time, when the property was worth 570, interest rates were close to about three and a quarter. Still, there were historical lows. So if property went down by 5% and your interest rate went up by half a percent, your monthly payment is $2480. You're actually gonna lo- pay $31 more. And in a 30 year period, you're gonna pay $40,000 more in interest. But why would you do that? Why, why, would, why, would, why would you wait till it goes down 5%? Let's just wait till it goes down 10%. So let's wait till the price goes down 10% because then you'll really buy it. But the interest rate is gonna go by 1%. You know, you're gonna buy it for 540. You're gonna pay $51 more and end up paying $77,000 more in interest. But why stop there? Let's go. Let's wait till it goes around to 510. So it reduces by 15%. Interest rate goes to one and a half percent more. So would, if you go back in time, two years ago, when the prices were 510 and the interest rate was four and a quarter, you should have bought it then when you tell me all the time, hey, I should have bought this place at that time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's just wait to go buy that one. So you are saying you'll be happy to buy it 510 at that interest rate and pay $60 more and pay an extra $110,000. I said, out of all these examples, please tell me this is not the best. And if this was still the best, and now you have to bid on it, and I'm asking you to bid $10,000 more than asking price, let's take that scenario. Let's bid $10,000 over asking price uh, at the 2.75%. Your payment is $40 more, but because it's so in such low interest rate, over 30 years, you only pay an extra $4,600 in interest. 30 years. You get a house that you want, and in 30 years, you only pay an extra $4,600 in interest. And for 40 bucks a month, which is less than a cup of coffee a day, you can have a dream house of your choice with one, per one month supply left in this market, and you're going to lock down your interest rate at 2.75%. You got to do this. So I have a question on that. Most people, so I've done scenarios like this before and they say, well, we're not gonna be in this house 30 years. So have you ever done one like over a scenario with this way um, for like a 10 year period? You can easily- I mean, does it still work out the same way? Cause I don't- Very easily. I have an app on my phone that I can take out when the app person asks a question. You can, you can just add that to this 10 year. I, you know, actually next time I'm gonna do that for somebody else. I'm going to add a five-year sellout, seven, 10 year sellout, 15 year sellout. And trust me, higher interest rate, always more interest in the initial first 10 years. It's actually going to make it even worse. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is the amortization. Yeah. yeah. So, so in this scenario, I, I tell them focus here. Most buyers focus here. Focus here. You will never get 2.75% interest rate in your life again. Truth. <laughs> Wrong place to look at it. So that, that's my answer to my team when we are talking to bidding offers and, you know, put an escalation clause. And then we show them two columns and think, what if you escalated by 10,000 or escalated by 20,000? How does it look like? And we, and we are winning a lot of multiple bidding offers for that reason. You don't have to pay it, but you escalate the price to that price, knowing my monthly bill is not going to go more than hundred bucks if I pay an extra $25,000. But if that's what it takes to win, I want you to win. Awesome. Just wanted to share that with you. No, I love the bonus info. This is like the bonus chapter or the like the hidden track at the end of Nirvana. Anyway, I just aged oh, myself again. I did that for Troy. I knew Troy would get that. I knew it. 
anyway, thank you for the bonus uh, He's bonus focusing track. on the optimism part of it, which is great. <laughs> the interest rate is the optimistic part of it. You're never yeah. going to get that again. Yeah. Yeah. Again. The banks, the banks would have to, well, I guess in Canada, they've done that before where they actually pay you to take a loan. It like, it, it's crazy. So. You'll get, you, everyone will get letters in their yeah. mail. We can refinance you. We can put money back in your bank, take a home line. Of, we'll all get the letters. Uh, I have received them when interest rate was 6% when I bought my first place. Uh, not a good example, like Gary says 18% when he started. But yeah, I bought my first place at 6% in 2004. And I remember in 2008, nine, when the interest rate was four and a half or something, I should get letters every day. Refinance your house, we refinance your house, no cost, refinance. Nope, nope, I already refinanced at four and a half right away, and I'm not refinancing at 5% when it goes up to get more money in the bank. Uh, right. I'm keeping the interest rate low as much as I can for the rest of my life. Refinance everything you own, everything. Well, thank you for uh, today and your knowledge and sharing all that with us. Um, our region is better for it. I can't wait for this this uh, to go out to the whole region. I know you're going to get a lot of play. What is it that we can do for you? Is there any um, follow or review or anything that we can do for you? Um, uh, the if we can help any of your clients in this area, uh, send us your referrals. We'll definitely take great care of them. Uh, uh, we have great processes and we treat your clients as our clients. Uh, and I think that's, uh, I'm not shy of asking for business. Uh, no, not that I was here because of that, but I'm happy yeah. to take some referrals. No, I asked you, I asked you. So you've got, um, and by the way, we do this at the end of every speaker. We you kind of ask, what can we give back? And um, the, so you're in New Jersey, Philly. Uh, where Philadelphia, exactly? surrounding neighborhoods, uh, anywhere in Philadelphia, we're about like 30 miles. Uh, it's, uh, it's within our reach and, uh, and New Jersey, South Jersey prominently uh, as compared to near New York. We are not there yet. All uh, right. Wilmington, Delaware, uh, New Jersey, Philadelphia, surrounding suburbs. And uh, the best way to reach me is my uh, email. It's Gaurav, G-A-U-R-A-V at thecondoshops.com. Or if they Google condo shops, or they'll it. find you. Right. I'm, I'm sure. And uh, if I send you the PowerPoint presentation, it has my information as well. Oh yeah. Perfect. We'll get that out as well today, uh, later today when Angela gets it or when you get it over and we'll get that out. But thank you again so much. We appreciate you and your time. We know you're obviously extremely busy running an empire, multiple empires. Um, so just uh, let us know how we can help and all the Jersey referrals and Philly and all that stuff are going to come your way for sure. So I appreciate that. Thank, thank you, you for so listening much. to me my babbling for an hour. No, that was fantastic. Thank you. Great, Great stuff. Perfect. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you very Thank much. You guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye. All right. You too. Thanks.